That's an interesting line. I mean, those lines are extremely tricky in, in the blitz. Yeah, uh, now the question is what Black is planning to play right now. E6? Or C6? Yeah, E6, E6. right. And then after bishop C4, C6 is kind of the main move. And there is bishop B4, which is very interesting. Uh huh. Bishop B4, he did play it. A very strange looking move, to be honest. Yeah, but the point is that, okay, I mean, the, the most natural reaction is a3, right? Yeah. Then they take, they go queen b6, and the point is actually to develop the knight on c6, somehow apply the pressure on d4. And, and I remember checking this one, it kind of works. There is one line to put problems where, where white is better, but you have to know it, it's a force in line with a lot of tactics. Takes, takes, queen b6, castle short, and then you play knight c6. B3? Okay, then, then black is supposed to be fine. Knight c6, castles, rook d8, that's sometimes... No, well, knight d7 is surprising. Because I thought the whole point was you go knight c6, you try to apply a pressure on d4. Knight c6, sometimes castle long. Knight d7 is a little bit strange looking. Because now it looks like you gave the bishop for, 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 for free. For nothing, yeah. yeah. Now white is very comfortable. Yeah. yeah, I mean, it's still a game, obviously. Black is not, like, lost. But the whole point of this system is actually to put the knight on c6, then rook on d8, and then white kind of has difficulties protecting d4. Yeah, remember that was played for a few times by Viktor Lasnichka, and, and I, think, I think, yeah, yeah there have been some games. Christian Bauer is another specialist in all those, all yeah. those weird openings. Yeah, but those weird openings you really have to know. Yeah, so that, that's a very dangerous weapon for Blitz usually, right? I mean, if you play, and one, if you're like one of the elite players, so you're usually checking what? Berlin, Knight of Grunfeld. Yeah, that, all that's the problems. It. Yeah, yeah. That's it. And then you face someone like that, a Blitz specialist who plays this opening all, all, all of his life. He knows all the tricks. That's actually, that's one of the tricks. Look, bishop to e4, queen. C6 spinning, I mean, kind of hinting at B5. And like, yeah, I see Kovalenko looking at Nepo, like, how did you allow this? Yeah. I you mean, didn't I mean, know this? Yeah, so that, that, that's a trick, yeah, because B5 is a threat. And if you play bishop B2, at the very least, black can consider taking on F3. Knight E5, played by Jan, takes, takes, knight to D5. Played very quickly once again. Ah, because bishop g2 is a trick. Yeah. So see, I mean, he attacks the bishop and then next move bishop g2. Yeah, this is now a big no, problem. I mean, it's like, you can you save the pawn, by the way? Because I just realized bishop, yeah, bishop d2, bishop takes g2. I um, mean, it's kind of... Ah, wait, there queen is queen g4. g4. There is queen g4, so Jan is tricky as well. Knight b6, uh, well, bishop f... No. Nah. Once again, bishop f1, I'm taking on c2. So what a tricky position that one yeah, is. Yeah, very tricky. And Nepo, who always plays so fast, is down to 120 yeah, on the clock. Yeah, he's clearly surprised. So yeah. Bishop b5, he finds the way to... I have never uh, ever seen him playing such a slow blitz game. It meant, I mean, it shows that what a surprise it have been by Kovalenko. All right, so does... Black win a pawn because you can take on c2 with the queen, yet that's what he does. Queen e2, I assume, is the kind of a critical move. I mean, you can, is it? You can trade go b4, right? And then claim that two bishops are, I'll probably save it. Okay. Maybe. Yeah, or maybe just take rook c1 and take on c7. Ah, yeah, maybe, maybe that's the best. Yeah. Takes, yeah. Take go rook c1, take. It's but the most practical. Yeah, but then once again, black takes, puts the bishop on d5, I think, I mean, black should have reasonable chances. Yeah, but white also has very nice drawing chances, I mean, putting the bishop maybe on e3. I ah, can also yeah, put yeah, yeah. it to, to b4 and d6, but maybe on d6 the bishop is doing nothing, yeah, bishop yeah, e3 you're, played. You're right, bishop e3, now I realize, yeah. And this might be a very good drawish compensation. It's like it's not easy to, you know, to unpin the... It's strange to say, but to pin the a7 pawn, right? It's not yeah. easy to move the knight because you want to get rid of this rook from c7. Now, by the way, bishop b6 is a threat. Yeah. So you will have to... Okay. Wow, nice trick. Nice tricky resource. Tricks, yeah. Again, tricky tricks here.
bishop c6. Uh, what do you do? You you have to have to swap swap on c8. You have to take now on c8. Yeah, you have to take on c8, and then rook takes c8, and then I'm not sure if you want to swap the bishops with uh, white, so you will have to leave, and then he can put the knight on d5. Yeah, the question if you uh, eventually want to take on b6, that's kind of a question. Ah, yeah, that's that's interesting. I okay, mean, rook take, takes, takes, rook takes, I take, and clear. then you are pinned. Maybe I can even play a4 and how you are getting out of this pin. And then I'm just going to play fc, king f2, king uh, e3, okay, bring the Okay, then king. I move the rook, you take on c6, I move the rook back. This is how I'm getting away oh from wow. the pin. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean that's but first you need first to open need to some make, yeah, window. First, yeah, okay, now we will see. Um, Jan is down to 20 seconds, by the way. So he, his opponent has one extra minute. Yeah, he knows that this decision is very important and he takes he on takes. b6. Meanwhile, Magnus Carlsen has already won. Oh, wow. I'm um, checking what happened in his game. Ah, some really, really quick win. Trapped the queen. That's like 20 moves, I guess. In the women's section, all the games are in progress. Okay. Yeah, so Nepo down to 16 seconds. It's not something he's used to. And Usually he's the one who is uh, uh, clearly ahead. Time, yeah. yeah. But look, but those end games they are tricky. Very I mean, with tricky. With this pawn on e5, even if Black would not have, let's say, there is no pawn on b6, still I would say Black has some pressure because the pawn Certainly. on e5 is kind of. And the bishop on d5 time. is a monster. You can maybe go g5, h5, king g7 later, g4. Mm -hmm. I mean, create weaknesses on uh, the g2. Okay, yeah. first r activating the rook, rook c3, a4, rook to e3. Okay, how this do you protect e5? Square? But this is somewhat surprising that he goes right after the pawn. Maybe I can go bishop c4. King f2. Ah, right, mm. some tricks, right? Well, what's the trick, by the way? If black takes the pawn, bishop d3, kind of claiming that it won't be easy to... I ah, know, he's not claiming anything. He's trying to make a draw, simply to, to liquidate the queen side and then to... But now bishop b5. Bishop b5. Now it's a draw. I still, still can go to d5. Ah, yeah, you can go bishop d5. Yeah, just yeah. a little bit strange to put the rook on a5 and the way, way it has no moves. Rook d6, rook a8. I would actually care to, to make a space for the king. I mean, yeah, exactly. I rook mean, a8 was a little bit strange, to be honest. It's very scary what black is. And still rook he insists. I mean, this is... Yeah. This is oh, finally. Yeah. Because instead of rook c8, he could have gone g5. Then usually you kind of like to expand a little on, yeah. this, on this side. King g7, now, now he's doing all the right things. So the king goes to, to, to f6, you go g5, and then you once again you activate the rook. Ah, rook c2, wow, now he rook attacks c2. the g2 pawn, how well, to protect. Well, actually, black has serious winning chances now. Yeah, and Nepo down to four seconds. g3, check, bishop d3. Bishop c4 would have won the game on a spot because it would lead to... But this just wins slowly. Yeah, this is, this is winning as well, of course. h5... Or, no, nah, not h5. Okay. I mean, Bishop c6, it's a little yeah. bit... Yeah, the black should be winning no matter what. You just not, do not, not blunder on e6. Yeah. Do not blunder on e6. Go king f6. Yes, bishop back to d3. Now the question is if it's h5 or... Ah, check and then rook yeah, g2. Rook g2. So yeah. he's planning to, to get the other one. Okay, this works, but then rook d2. And Kovalenko is also controlling the time, which mm -hmm. is interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, the other winning plan. Put the bishop on d5 and then run with the b pawn. But first, play h5. Because yeah. now g4, g4. Ah, yeah. He had to play h5. Yeah, but like okay, it's just completely winning. I mean, it's completely winning no matter what, but it's like it kind of the. But he's also down to 10 seconds. Yeah, king now. f6. Yeah, right. Okay, you go b3. No, he doesn't want to. No. P3, no, completely mm. winning for black. And that's a very nice game by uh, Igor Kovalenko. It's not over yet, but I don't see what can happen so that black doesn't win. Yeah. B2? What? Why would you do this? I mean, B2, no, Bishop okay. B4, B2 anyway. Okay. Here. <laughs> wow. Bishop B3. The well, game continues. Is somehow. And not 3 2. Oops. Takes, takes, no, that was, that was weird. That was weird. You can't think here. I mean, what do you do? Bishop e4, takes, king is running, no, black is still winning, yeah? e5. Wow. No, well, actually, I'm not sure, I mean, he's, if he is winning. h5, I mean, what can you do, h5? There is no other move. Takes, and then king is in time. 
Can you believe wow, it? Wow, draw! I mean, Unbelievable! Look at banging the, smashing the table. 